Uh, good day viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. So right here with me, I want us to look at travel graphs, okay? So this is a, um, the topic that is coming from grade 10 work. So under travel graphs, there are two things that ca they can give you. They can give you distance time graph. They can also give you velocity time graph, okay? So here we are focusing on the velocity time graph. So this graph is showing the velocity time graph. So under a velocity time graph, in the vertical axis right here, you are going to find the velocity which will be measured in meters per second, okay? Then in the horizontal axis right here, you are going to have the time. And this time will be measured in what? In seconds, okay? So from here, you may find that uh, if they have not given you velocity time graph, you can have a speed time graph. So if, they are, if it's a speed time graph in the vertical axis right here, you are going to have speed, which will be measured in meters per second as well. All right. So from there, we take note of what we have. So from here, zero. So this zero is the origin. It's the starting point when you are going in the vertical axis. Also when you are going in the horizontal axis. Okay. So this zero represents here meters per second. Here it will present what? Time. That is the meaning. Okay. Now, you can check from zero up to here. We are considering that a particle is moving, okay? So when a particle is moving, you find that it's accelerating, it's increasing. So from here to here, we are going to have acceleration, okay? We are going to have what? Acceleration. And this acceleration which comes from here to here is a constant. So this line, okay? This line represents the gradient, okay? Now, from here to here, we are going to have the constant speed, okay? which will reflect to this other side, okay, like this, okay, so this is the constant speed, then from here to here, we have the object now, or the particle, that is slowing down, meaning it's decelerating, or it's retarding, okay, so if you get a negative acceleration, means that you have gotten a deceleration, which is coming from here, so here, we are going to have deceleration okay okay so here this deceleration is a negative acceleration which is slowing what slowing down now under the velocity time graph the formulas are very important remember i've talked about acceleration so you must know what formula can you use to find the acceleration all right so the formula that can be used you can say we can have formula one where we are going to say acceleration is equal to. So on this um, acceleration, we have the initial velocity and the final velocity there. So acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. That is the first formula that you must know. Apart from this formula, you must also know how you can find the distance that is traveled throughout the the journey okay so the distance under the graph we consider the area okay under this graph so when you look at this shape this is a trapezium so if you are considering this whole area or this whole journey you are going to use this formula for distance where we say distance is equal to 1 over 2 in brackets plus a plus b h so this is the second formula that you must take note, okay? Alright, so apart from that, uh, let's take note of another formula, okay? So this formula, they can ask you to find the speed, okay, of the journey. So formula for speed is speed is equal to distance over time. So you have to ensure that you take note of those three, what, three formulas, okay? So let us look at an example how we can apply those Z formulas now. All right, so let us look at this first example. Find the acceleration for the first five seconds. So they want you to find the acceleration in the first five seconds. So the first five seconds, we see that an object is accelerating from here going up, okay? In the first five seconds right here. Okay, so first thing we are going to need the formula. We need the formula. So we are going to say acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. 
that is our formula now here let us first organize our data okay so on this data we need to find what value we are going to put on final velocity what value we are going to put on initial what value we are going to put on on time so we look for v u and t okay so for v is the final velocity so when you look at this graph okay uh, the particle is starting from here it will move up to here so the final velocity is going to be a 10 okay it's going to be a 10 10 meters per second okay and then initial velocity is from here the starting point going here it's zero so here we have zero meters per second now when it comes to time this is where we have time they have said you find the acceleration for the first five seconds so this particle it is accelerating from here reaching up to here it's using this first time five second five seconds so time is going to be five seconds so from what you have now there's just need for you to plug in in the formula that you have okay let's substitute all right so we can now substitute uh, in our formula right here so we are going to say acceleration is equal to so where we have the final velocity you are going to put a 10 minus where we have the initial velocity you are going to put zero right there over so what is our time our time is five seconds so we are going to write the five right there okay so i hope that we are moving together it's clear so from there what are we going to do we are going to say acceleration is equal to so here we get 10 over a 5 so 10 minus 0 it's a 10 over 5 okay so from here acceleration is equal to 5 here it's a 1 5 into 10 it's 2 1 into 2 2 meters per second square so this is it our acceleration in the first five seconds so here on the units you have to put a square okay this will show that you have calculated for acceleration so this is our first example let us look at the second example now all right so we now come to question b right here find the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds find the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds so when you look at this graph okay you have zero seconds five seconds ten seconds so they want you to find the distance that is going to be traveled in this first ten what seconds so this is why i'm even shading this part so we are going just to consider this shape so this is the distance traveled in the first ten seconds so remember what i said distance under a graph is the same as the area covered under this what this graph so when you look at this uh these shapes you're having a shape which is looking like this okay you're having a shape that is looking like this and this shape this is a trapezium okay so this is the shape that you you have so from here when you take a look at this shape you have uh you have zero to ten then you also have this point and this point so let us come up with the the formula that we can use to find the, the distance so we write the formula the formula is distance is equal to so we said a plus b in brackets over two okay then height this is the formula that we use when finding the area under the trapezium and the reason why we have used this formula because this shape that is shaded is giving us see, the shape of the trapezium okay so let us now identify our sides so we have a this a is the side that is representing from here up to here so a is going to be here then b is from here up to where 10 is so this is going to be our b okay then the height is going to be from here up to here all right so we, we're gonna find the values now that are presenting a h and b so this a is being presented by you can see here we have got this point right here 
and this point which is 5 okay again from here to here it's 10 so to find from here to here the length you find the difference in time between 10 and the a5 so 10 minus 5 okay that is your finding for a you say 10 minus a5 this will give us a5 so a is equal to 5 okay for b it's from here up to here so the difference in time 10 minus 0 you get a what a 10 so b is going to be a 10. Now what about the height? The height is from here up to here. So the correspondence value will be here where we have a 10. So from here to here we have a 10, okay, which is right here. So the height is going to be a 10. So let us just substitute in our formula where we say distance is equal to open bracket where there is a we put a 5. Where there is B, we put a 10, we cross over 2, okay? Then where there is height, we are going to put a what? A 10. So I hope that you are following there. I hope that you are following. So how are we going to answer this now? How are we going to tackle it? Let's see how we can answer it now. All right, so here, let us now work it out. So, uh, you can see you have a 2 right here, and then there is a 10. You can uh, simplify 2 here, 1, 2 into 10, it's a 5, okay? So, we are going to say distance is equal to, we add 5 plus 10, we will get a 15, okay? Which will be multiplied by a 5 right here. So, here we have a, a 1, so the denominator is a 1, which will same give us this. So, from here, Distance is equal to just now multiply 15 times 5, which will give us a 75 meters. So this is the, the answer for, for distance. All right. So that is how you can find distance as easy as that. Now, uh, there is another me method that you can use. Okay. And this other method, you just take a look at the shapes that you have. Okay. So we had this shape, the first one, which is a triangle. Then we have this other shape, which is a what? A rectangle. So you can name this to be your A, then you name this to be your, your B. So if you want to find the distance, if you don't want to apply the trapezium formula, you can just find the distance of this triangle plus the distance of this what? Uh, rectangle. So let's see how we can do it. If we are going to have the same values. All right. So for this other method, we have said you are going to say distance is equal to, so since you have got, this is a triangle also, then this is a rectangle. So the area that we use to find uh, a triangle, we say half BH. So we are going to say half BH, okay, plus the distance of the rectangle, okay. So when finding the area of the rectangle, we say length times breadth. So this is going to be LB. So from here, we just plug in now. We say half times, what is the breadth? So this is your rectangle, sorry, your triangle. The breadth will be here. The height is here, okay? So from here to here, we have a five. So five times the height from here to here, we have a 10 right here, a 10. You cross, plus, you come here, length, okay? Length times breadth like this. So your length is, you have a 10 year, you have a 5 year. The difference you say 10 minus 5, which will give us a 5. So the length will be a 5 times the breadth from here to here, which is a what? A 10 right here. You do this, okay? So from here, what are we going to do? All right, so from here, what are we going to do? Uh, we say 2 here, it's a 1, okay? So 2 into itself right here, it's a 1. 2 into this 10, it's a 5. So say distance is equal to, so you have 1 times 5 times 5. This will give us a 25 plus 5 times 10, this will give us a 50. So therefore, distance is equal to, so just add 25 plus 50, this will give us 75 V meters okay so this is the, the distance so you can say that uh, we have found the same value for distance so you can either use the formula for the trapezium 
or you consider these two shapes that you have to find the, the distance. So remember, this was the distance in the first 10 seconds. But they can ask you to find the total distance of the, the whole journey. You are just going to find the distance of this triangle that is remaining. Then you add with the, the 75. Okay? Or you just consider this as a trapezium. Then you calculate for distance. So thank you so much everyone for having time to view this content. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.